Hi everybody and welcome to our TNT on Tuesday, second day of the week. Most people back at work now after a three day long weekend. A bit of a quiet news day yesterday because of course all the journalists had gone away for a three day long weekend as well. Bit more news around today, let's get started with it. We go to Calcite English on their Facebook page, Missing. A Malaysian woman of Chinese origin has gone missing in northern Thailand. She was last seen in the Maasai district, Chiang Rai province, near the checkpoint next to the city of Takalek, where there's a major casino, according to the last images uh, shared before disappearance since June the 1st. Now, these uh, casinos uh, are an increasing problem along the Thai-Burmese border, also the Thai-Cambodian border. Uh, we've got another story about them in just a moment, but they're involved with um, in illegal gambling, uh, online gambling uh, scams, uh, money laundering, child prostitution, I mean, any number of problems. And we'll check out uh, another story about another one of these casinos along the Thai-Burmese border in just a moment. But back to Angie, if anyone knows where the woman is and to contact her mother, a phone number down there, 014-328-2626. There is a photo of Angie, if anybody recognises that face. And the Bangkok Post says, Family fears for Malaysian woman missing in Chiang Rai. And the mother said her daughter travelled to Chiang Mai uh, alone by air on May the 29th. Her daughter took pictures of various places in Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai sent them to her. The last pictures she took and sent to her indicated she was in Mae Sai in Chiang Rai, a border town opposite Myanmar's Takelek. They included those of the border checkpoints of Mae Sai and Takelek. And police have been asked to check security camera recordings to see if the young Malaysian woman had crossed the border into Myanmar, where there are many large casinos and business complexes where many people from Thailand and other countries work. So we're just going to have more news, probably bad news, coming out of these uh, casinos that are setting up along the border areas. Gambling casinos generally and officially are illegal here in Thailand, which is why they're setting up just across the border areas and attracting a lot of wealthy ties, a lot of bad money, and of course, a lot of people who want to work in these places as well. Going to this story from nationthailand.com, and Karen BGF threatens to close Thai Myanmar bridges as power cut to casino town. And this story takes us to the western border of Thailand with Myanmar. And the Karen Border Guard Force has threatened to close the Thai-Myanmar friendship bridges in Tuk's Mare Sot district if Thailand suspends electricity supply to the casino town of Shwe Koko in the Karen state. Well, I hope I got that even vaguely correct, but this uh, Karen Border Guard Force, just one of these civil militias who are anti the Burmese government. The threat came after the Provincial Electricity Authority that's here in Thailand informed the Tuk governor about the decision to cut electricity to Shwe Koko at the request of the Myanmar military regime. And Shwe Koko, which lies over the border from Mesot, is a notorious criminal hub of gambling, online scams and trafficking financed by Chinese tycoons and controlled by the Karen BGF. Well, just another problem that the authorities are having is that uh, Mare Sot is just across the river from Myanmar where these Chinese tycoons are running these illegal gambling hubs. Uh, well, of course, the Mare Sot's got these huge 5G towers delivering cheap and high-speed uh, internet, and these towns are just tapping into it. So the government are trying to figure out how they can sort of block those towers from being used from across the river, which they probably can't. And the story from The Nation goes on to say that the Karen BGF has prepared backup electricity to replace the Thai supply. Further down, uh, the provincial police, soldiers and security officials are preparing to deal with an influx of Myanmar people and foreign workers after the supplies are cut. Because they're not just cutting it to the casino, it's also the whole town there. So of course the people without electricity. 
And down the bottom there, Myanmar people arriving at the border would be asked to return to their country while foreigners would face legal action. This is where it is. Uh, We can see Bangkok. We can see all of Thailand there. And uh, we can zoom in to the location of the second Thai Myanmar Friendship Bridge there in the Tak province. And uh, a big bridge there linking Thailand with Myanmar. So they're just two stories, but there are plenty more of these casino hubs popping up uh, along the border towns, not only with Myanmar and Thailand, but also the Lao and the Cambodian borders as well. And uh, I'm afraid we're going to be hearing a lot more news coming out of those particular border towns. A big thanks to our sponsors, Five Star Marine. If you want to go on a VIP private chartered tour to the islands off Phuket, I can highly recommend Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description which gives my viewers a very special deal that's good for you, good for Five Star Marine, and it's good for me as well. Tuesday's TNT, thank you for tuning in. And if you do have an opportunity to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. It doesn't cost you a cent. Uh, We don't send you any emails or anything. And it does help us in the YouTube world. Going to our next story now and the patianews.com reports that Thai police continue to investigate alleged highway bribery scheme. Let's find out more. The National Police are investigating an alleged bribery scheme that enables cargo trucks to bypass checkpoints on highways. The police chief has instructed inspectors throughout the country to look into the matter and take action against any implicated officers. And a member of the Move Forward Party revealed that truck operators make monthly payments to police officers in exchange for stickers that allow their vehicles to pass through checkpoints. I wonder what's in those trucks. I wonder what they're trying to hide. In responding to the allegation, the Royal Thai Police Commissioner General has issued an order for the Officer of Inspector General to investigate the claim. The Move Forward Party member, together with the Land Transport Federation of Thailand and Highway Police Officers, will be summoned to provide statements. So police inspecting public officials inspecting police, that's got to work well. The case is the first to be processed by the Police Complaint Review Board under the new National Police Act. The board consists of officials from the Ombudsman Office, judges, attorneys, lawyers, police commanders, representatives from local communities and officers from the Office of Inspector General. So this is all put in place by the previous government in an attempt to solve uh, entrenched police corruption. Let's hope they do come up with something because obviously there's a lot of these trucks passing through checkpoints that are not getting any inspections at all. And just down the bottom, the board's findings will include specific penalties which will then be forwarded to the supervisors of implicated officers for immediate disciplinary action. And uh, we just found out down the bottom there, the proceeding is a press release from the Thai government. And again, the thepatianews.com, perhaps you could put that information at the top of the article so we can then read the article in better context. Going to our next story, heading down to Phuket, update... Phuket taxi drivers asked to be more polite to tourists following a viral incident. Well, nothing to do with the virus, but uh, the story did indeed go viral, and taxi drivers in Phuket are being asked by officials to be more polite after a foreign female tourist was forced out of a minivan in Phuket by drivers of other vans operating at the Phuket Rasada port. The Rasada port, one of the major jump-off points for people, people heading out into Pangna Bay from the east side of Phuket. And the drivers claimed the tourist app-hailing van driver could not pick up passengers at the port and told the tourist to drag her suitcase out of there if she intended to use app-hailing services. So we'll get into these app hailing services and the problems with taxis in Phuket. Won't be the first or the last time I'll be doing the story, but uh, this does give a little bit more explanation later on in the story. And we're told that the minivan with his foreign passenger used the Bolt application. A lot of people like using Bolt these days. Is it legal? Let's find out. The local taxi drivers at the pier misunderstood and they did not realise the Bolt application has already been approved by the PLTO and is not illegal in Phuket. 
Well, that's bullshit because they've spent the last six months campaigning against it vigorously to try and ensure that it wasn't made legal. So there's a photo there of the uh, police officer explaining to the taxi drivers at the Rasada Pier that the Bolt application is in fact legal. They just look so surprised. And the TPN notes, however, that private businesses and places can enter contracts with specific taxi drivers and services, such as the Phuket Airport, which limits the availability of ride-hailing apps and other services, even if the service is legal. And as a private place, the Rasada Pier reserves the right to do so as well. So if you've got government installations like the Ratsara Pier and the Phuket International Airport entering into private contracts for these facilities to be run, and those private contractors then make deals with local taxi cabals uh, for exclusive services, I think that is where a lot of the problem lies, and that's what needs to be sorted out. And further down there, this has led to many conflicts and issues, especially at the Phuket airport, with some tourists even trudging significant distances from the airport terminal to save money on taxis. Move Forward Party MPs have urged private businesses to allow ride-sharing applications, but many private businesses claim they utilise their own taxi services for safety and security. Well, that's just a pathetic excuse. Critics, however, say the contracts are only about money for both parties. So who are the victims in this? Well, mostly the tourists. They probably don't know what's going on with these taxi mafias. They don't, uh, don't understand all the intricacies of these contracts, whether they're legal or not. And it just makes Thailand, and specifically Phuket in this case, look bad. And going to our next story now, and to the VN Express... 48 Chinese tourists arrested in Thailand, pub drug bust. And the Thai police have arrested 48 Chinese tourists for allegedly using illegal drugs following a pre-dawn raid on a pub in Bangkok's Huai Quang district. And this happened on Sunday. The raiding officers found 30 men, 18 women, partying in four karaoke rooms and seized cocaine, ketamine, ecstasy and happy water which is a drug cocktail along with drug-taking paraphernalia. And they're investigating if they broke immigration laws and whether the pub operator gave them the drugs. A preliminary investigation found the venue was exclusively meant for wealthy Chinese customers. How wealthy? Well, it has four karaoke rooms and charges customers six to 15,000 baht for an evening. And that excludes food and drinks. Yikes. That story reported by the VN Express. Let's catch up on the latest with the political shenanigans. And we go to the BangkokPost.com. And Peter has sold ITV shares. The Move Forward Party leader may still face disqualification. And the Move Forward Party leader, Peter, has reportedly sold the shares he held in a media company in the hope of keeping his bid to become Thailand's next Prime Minister alive. However, as the shares were sold after he had applied to run in the May 14 election, he may still be disqualified for violating the election law. And the complainant said if he sold the shares after the Move Forward Party nominated him as the party's Prime Minister candidate, then the violation has already been committed. The Move Forward Party leader is under scrutiny over the 42,000 shares he held in ITV, an independent broadcaster founded in the 1990s. Under the current constitution, a candidate is barred from running for office if he or she owns shares in a media company. And if found guilty of violating the election law, Mr Peter will be disqualified as an MP, which would complicate the Move Forward Party's efforts to form the next government. Well, complicate indeed. And according to Mr Peter, the shares were originally held by his father, who died in 2006, and ITV stopped broadcasting in 2007, and its license was taken over by Thai PBS. The company was delisted from the stock exchange in Thailand in 2014. So it's going to be some very fine points of the law to what actually constitutes a valid shareholding that could, well, influence things. And the MFP Secretary General said yesterday that the party's legal team is prepared to fight the allegation over Mr Peter's qualifications. He insisted Mr Peter did not violate any of the prohibitions stipulated by the Constitution. 
Meanwhile, the Move Forward Party yesterday expressed concerns that the disqualification of MPs elect found guilty of election law violations could undermine Mr Peter's bid to be the next Prime Minister. So we're just going to have to wait to see if the Election Commission hands this to the Constitutional Court. Uh, We've got more weeks of uh, water going under the bridge before we find out some answer on this particular issue. And the BangkokPost.com reporting that Taxon set to return in July, according to his daughter Patong Tan, who was the prime ministerial candidate for the Per Thai party. Taxon, a former prime minister in Thailand, been living in exile. Let's see what happens with this story. So Patong Tan saying Taxon, her father, looks set to return to Thailand in July, but the exact date is not yet known. Patong Tan says, I don't know the exact date yet. He said it would be next month, that's July. Taxon, who lives in exile in Dubai, has said he would return home in July, citing his old age and the desire to be with his grandchildren. And asked again whether Taxon would definitely return in July, Ms Patong Tan said, I respect my dad's decision, so whatever it is, I give him my full moral support. And Taxon was overthrown in a military coup on the 19th of September 2006. He's since lived in self-imposed exile, except for a brief visit to Thailand in 2008. During his absence from the country, the Supreme Court's criminal division sentenced him in absentia to a total of 12 years imprisonment in four cases. Well, if Taxon does return to Thailand, it's just going to be one huge dog and pony show. A massive distraction right at the time the parliament will be sitting down to decide on next prime minister, the next government. Uh, It's just going to be a huge show. Now, he is a father. He's a grandfather. So this story could be interesting to Mr. Taxon if he does come back. And it's covered by Thai PBS World. Male government officials now can take 15-day paternity leave on full pay. And Thailand's government officials now have the right to take 15 consecutive working days paternity leave on full pay to take care of their wives after child delivery. And also among the changes to the rights of government officials, those who take leave for 30 days in a row to help their wives after child delivery will be entitled to only 15 days pay. So a few other provisions there announced in the Thai PBS story, but it looks like at least for government officials, they'll now be able to apply for 15 days paid leave. So it looks like Thailand's catching up to other parts of the world where that's already granted. And with that, hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around Thailand. Really appreciate the time you've spent with me over the past 15 minutes. And let's do it again tomorrow.